Today's video is on the top five most weird looking snails. Number five, Leucoke claridium. You might think most snails look fairly dull and boring, but if they're unfortunate enough to become infected with a particular type of parasitic worm, everything changes. Known as Leucoke claridium, the species invades the eye stalks of the snail and begin to make them pulsate in order to mimic a caterpillar. Once inside the snail's body, the worms absorb all the nutrients they can and even castrate the host to prevent energy being wasted on producing sperm or eggs. When it's ready, the worm takes control of the snail and makes it go into an open space with the intent of putting it on such a display that it gets eaten by a bird. This process is called aggressive mimicry and is a necessary part of the worm's life cycle. They lay their eggs in the bird's gut, which are then excreted out, ready for another snail to pick them up and the process starts again. Don't feel too bad for the snail though. The birds only eat their pulsating eye stalks and they survive the encounter. Soon enough, their eyes grow back and they can return to normal life. That is, of course, unless they manage to pick up another one of the parasitic worms. Number four, spiny murex. This prickly shell looks something like you'd expect from a completely different underwater species, but it is in fact a snail known as the spiny murex. They are found around the waters of New Zealand from just beneath the surface to depths of 1800 feet. And fossils of this particular species have been dated as far back as 5 million years ago. The spikes are, of course, a defense measure to protect against fish. The shape of their spines changes depending on where they live, with those in shallower waters having much shorter ones than those in the deep, and the ones that live in muddy environments have much thinner spines than those that live in sandy regions. Their ability to protect themselves from threats has allowed them to become an effective predator in their own right. They target other mollusks and drill into their shells with their radula. Once a hole is formed, they inject an acid which softens the prey's shell and makes the flesh much easier to obtain. Number three, worm snail. If you think of the features you'd expect to see when looking at a snail, then this next one goes against pretty much everything. The worm snail, whose scientific name is Vermetidae, doesn't have any form of coiled shell at all. Instead, they have irregularly shaped tubular shells that are made from limestone and mold to the surface that they have grown on, such as a rock or piece of underwater debris. Unlike other species, worm snails don't move from their position and instead use an ingenious method to catch their prey. Their mantle sticks out of the tube, and from there they release stings of sticky mucus into the current, which catches plankton and other small pieces of food. Once ready, it reels this web back in to sift through what it needs. Specimens have been found throughout the waters of Australia, the West Pacific, and even Florida, but very little is truly known about them, and they could well spread much further around the globe. They are of concern to researchers, though, because they can rapidly change the underwater environment if a new colony is able to take hold. A recent colony that was discovered in an artificial reef in the Florida Keys already numbers in the tens of thousands and could have begun devastating consequences for the living coral in the region. Unusually for animals that stay in one place, Vermetidae are of distinctly different sexes. The males release the sperm into the water, which is captured in the webs of the females. Once born, the larvae are free swimming until they can find an ideal place to latch onto, and then they are able to begin forming their lifelong home. Number two, violet rafting snail. At first, you might think the violet rafting snail is a type of jellyfish, but once you look closer, it becomes clear that this is a type of snail that uses an unusual method to travel through the water. They get their name not only because of the deep shades of purple on their shell, but also because the creature inside is a beautiful shade of violet. They are found in the tropical waters of the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans, and are often grouped together in large colonies. When they are born, they start as a free-swimming larva, but when they reach adulthood, they begin to produce a mucus, which they agitate with their foot to trap air within. This bubble raft keeps them floating on the surface with their shell pointing down, and without any means of propulsion, they simply follow the ocean currents. This species have relatively large heads beneath the water's surface and unusually small eyes that are located at the base of their tentacles. They feed on jellyfish 
and while they float in groups, they don't come into contact with each other. To breed, the males simply release sperm into the water, and when it comes into contact with the female, it will fertilize her eggs. Violet rafting snails get to experience both sides of this process because they all begin life as males and subsequently become female later on. Living life with adaptations like this may be advantageous, but they come with a downside. Violet rafting snails are only able to trap water in their mucus when they are at the surface, and this presents a real danger. If for any reason they become detached from their bubble raft, they will sink all the way down to the seabed. They aren't adapted to living in that environment and will desperately produce large amounts of mucus before eventually dying. Number 1. The Joe Strummer Snail Joe Strummer was the frontman of The Clash, one of the most notorious punk bands. So it seems fitting that this species of snail, covered in spikes, was named after him. Its full name is Alvini Concha Strummeri, and they live in the hydrothermal vents of the Indian and Western Pacific Ocean. These environments that are thousands of feet underwater, extremely hot, and with high concentrations of acids, are inhospitable to most other animals on Earth. But here, the Alvini concha thrive. The genus is one of only two that gets its nutrition from the endosymbiotic relationship with a form of bacteria, which lives in their gills and feed on the substances in the water before being themselves eaten by the snails. Their entire golf ball-sized shells are covered in spikes, and these spikes, too, are home to a fuzzy white bacteria, which also thrives in the geothermal plumes. Researchers are not entirely certain why these snails have evolved to have all of these protrusions, as it's unlikely to be solely to defend against predators. It's possible that the increased surface area helps to protect them from the harsh conditions that they live in. And even so, most that have been studied show signs of extreme damage that has been caused by the heat. Their shells are surprisingly thin, and their colors change depending on the chemical makeup of the water they live in. They and other similar species have been found at depths ranging between 1,150 and 11,500 feet, but no single specimen has ever been successfully brought to land because their proteins unfold by the time they reach the water's surface. Their stunning visual appearance clearly makes these snails the punk rockers of the gastropod world, but that wasn't the only reason they were named after Joe Strummer. He was also an environmentalist who worked hard to be a carbon-neutral artist, so was the obvious choice when scientists were thinking of what to call them. Honorable Mentions Candy Cane Snail Snails are a popular delicacy in some places around the world, but if you can't quite get your head around it, maybe you haven't seen a candy cane snail. They are native to the island of Hispaniola in the Caribbean, which is where the countries of Haiti and the Dominican Republic are, and they spend their lives living on trees and feeding on moss, fungi, and algae. Growing up to 2.4 inches long, their shells are silky smooth and shiny and are either white or creamy white, with spiral stripes of orange, blue, purple, and yellow. The unique appearance of these species has led to many being harvested for use in shellcraft, which, coupled with increased deforestation on the island, has led to fears for their long-term survival. Selling these shells is now illegal, so it's hoped that their numbers will recover and refill the forest with color. Armored Snail Snail shells not only provide the animals with somewhere safe to sleep, but act as a defensive barrier from potential predators. One species, though, has taken this to a whole new level, the Chrysomalan squamiferum. First discovered in 1999, this species lives in geothermal vents more than two miles deep in the Indian Ocean. For anything to survive down here requires some serious protection, but these snails have actually incorporated the metals that are released into the water into their shells. There are three layers, the innermost that is made from calcium, the thick middle layer made from organic material, and the outer layer that's made from iron sulfide. This iron plating is unlike anything seen anywhere else in the animal kingdom, and is so unusual that researchers are closely investigating how it's formed to see if there are any potential uses, such as making stronger materials for the construction of planes, cars, and military equipment. 
I hope you all enjoyed today's video narrated by Zach this time. Be sure to subscribe for more and check out some of our recent uploads.